If you look at any video game with pretty nature, it is pretty because nature is everywhere. Not just in the distance, not just a few plants coming out of otherwise empty soil, like in my game. It's not that I don't know the solution to this problem, it's thrown at me at least two times a day by players on YouTube, on Steam, on Twitter, everywhere. The game needs grass in one way or another. Point is, this game already has performance problems and simulating and visualizing millions of individual grass plants will only make it worse. So in my mind, doing this game without grass wasn't really an option. It was just too barren, but simultaneously doing this game with grass was not a real option either. So, for those of you new here, this is evolution simulation game The Sapling, my solo indie game project. It's a game where you can basically do two types of things. On the one hand, there are a number of scenarios tasking you to design an ecosystem that meets specific requirements. On the other, there is a sandbox where you can build your own algae, plants and animals, turn on random mutations and see how they evolve. For grass in this game, most players seem to have something simple in mind, often suggested is the Equilinox approach, where the soil is colored green if you put plants on it. It's a bit as if you not only put down the plants, but also invisible grass in the same area. But while this approach works really well for Equilinox, I feel it would be cheating for my game. This game is about simulating life and I don't want to have some more life on screen that is there, but without the option to customize it or have it evolve. That would just be ugly game design in my opinion. So I needed to solve not one, but two problems. Simulating grass and visualizing grass. Two almost unrelated problems with unrelated solutions. The main breakthrough here are not the solutions that I came up with. The solutions are a bit underwhelming even. It's the realization that these were the two problems that I needed to solve to make grass possible and that these problems were, in fact, solvable. Starting with the simulation, it's obvious that we cannot simulate every individual blade of grass. So far, everything you designed in the plant editor was going to be an individual plant in the simulation. But now, if you design a grass plant and place it in the world, it will immediately fill a whole area with this one species. Once grass conquers an area, it will stay there. It won't die on its own. For grass, I'm not simulating individual lifespans. The only way for it to die is if the environment changes, like a really hot or cold season, for example. Grass does not grow where trees grow though, which has the nice side effect that an area might start out as grassland, but might later be overtaken by larger plants and turn into a forest. Okay, but then, the visualization. There's one thing I knew for sure, and that is that the grass basically needs to be free in terms of rendering time. It was the grass in Zelda that really convinced me that simple grass can be beautiful. So I thought that if I could make something that looked like that, I might be able to pull it off. Still, to make sure I didn't lose sight of the render budget, I developed it as a side project on a laptop, so I'd never be tempted to use more computing power. With grass, you have a lot of moving things on screen simultaneously, which typically processors in PCs are not that good at. For that, we need the graphics card. A set of instructions telling the graphics card or GPU how something looks is called a shader. Problem was, I had very little experience writing shaders. As you know, I'm doing everything myself, from the coding to the art, the video editing, I even hand composed all of the music in these videos, so I had to cut corners. For me, so far, shaders were such a corner. But similar to how a tutorial by Codier once convinced me to tackle procedural walking, I now found a tutorial by Roy Stan that made me confident enough to give this a try. And similar to the procedural walking, the final product looked nothing like the tutorial. So let's start with this simple terrain. My first milestone was to have a shader that would draw a simple triangle on each vertex of the terrain, like this. At this point, everything was hard-coded in the shader, 
but of course things like height of the grass and color depend on the simulation. So my next step was making these dynamic. Grass height is simply a matter of changing the Y coordinate of the highest vertex. Grass color is changing the color associated with each of the vertices. This also allows me to create gradients like this, which I immediately liked because it allows you to see the individual blades much better. Next, let's make the grass a bit more realistic by adding extra blades per vertex, which can be put very closely together or very far apart. This is where I started running into the first limitations however, because there is only a limited amount of extra triangles the shader allows me to draw. If you make the blades really small, which indeed later turned out I needed to do to integrate all this in the game, you can see I need much more. The solution to this turned out to be a tessellation algorithm, which basically means that the shader itself figures out some extra vertices to add to the terrain. The terrain in my game usually is very low poly, but for grass I automatically make it less low poly, basically. A further technique for more realism is to rotate the grass in random directions, both vertically, as you see here, but also horizontally. This rotation amount I then linked to a noise texture that I then move over the terrain so it looks like the grass is moving in the wind. I can influence how fast the texture moves, this is super fast, this is slow, and how much influence it has on the terrain, this is a lot, this is only a little. So this looks good, right? Ready even? No, this is only where the real work starts, linking the shader to the existing simulation code. So we have a large terrain with grass everywhere and on every location this grass can look different. Long blades, short blades, all kinds of colors, with or without seeds, with or without flowers, which can also have all kinds of colors and so on and so on. To tell the shader where on the planet the grass should have what characteristics, I'm using textures. A texture for a planet with an island with blue grass and an island with red grass could look like this, for example. But we also have grass height, whether there is a body part, the position of this body part and the color of this body part. If I didn't need to worry about performance, I would have used five separate textures here. But continuously building textures on the fly is expensive, so I found a more efficient way. You might know that in most images there are four values for every pixel. Red, blue, green and alpha, which encodes to what extent a pixel is transparent. In the Decepling simulation, however, I represent plant colors with just two values, U and brightness, and the color of flowers and body parts with just one, U. So I put the grass U in red, the grass brightness in blue, and the body part color in green. And now you might think, okay, we only have the alpha channel left, you're never going to fit all the other stuff in that one channel. But conveniently, for grass we only have three heights. Which means there are also only three potential locations for a body part. And because the grass shader simplifies the body part, there are also only three ways in which body parts can be visualized. So we can summarize all of that by giving each possible combination a number between 0 and 27. So this way I could get the shader to show actual grass on my terrain. And I was kind of expecting that a planet consisting of huge savannas would be heavy on the GPU. In fact, any planet was heavy on the GPU, even the ones without grass. After several days of debugging this issue, I discovered that the problem here was the tessellation, the algorithm that adds more vertices so the grass can be more dense. The shader was always applying this algorithm for all of the terrain, whether there was grass or not. The solution fortunately was simple. You might remember from a previous video that the game terrain is split up in smaller parts. I already felt pretty good about this when I implemented it, and this hunch was confirmed when I needed to optimize grass. The idea is that terrain parts further away from the camera don't need as much tessellation as the ones close to it. I can simply adjust the amount of tessellation for each individual chunk of terrain every time the camera moves. This is the detail when the camera is really close, and this is it as the camera moves away. On top of this, there are fewer blades of grass per vertex the further away it is from the camera. 
Okay, cool, so now we have grass. But there are still a few things that need to be done to make it truly feel part of the game. Firstly, it needs to be hooked up to the random mutations code so it can evolve. On my first try, I was playing on a planet where nearly all plant colors would thrive. So the results were unexpectedly pleasing. What was also unexpected was that I forgot to implement that grass cannot grow underwater. However, when I saw what happened, I realized that this might be a nice opportunity to introduce seagrass in shallow water. In reality, seagrass is not grass that can also grow underwater, but a completely different clade, so this is an oversimplification. But I really like how... <laughs> okay, apparently I also need to implement a fog effect where the grass becomes bluer if it gets further away from the camera. But I really like how the barren terrain is now also solved underwater too. And finally, of course, this update is about food. And with grass being all around everywhere, it will be a major source of food for herbivores. If that does not justify a special eating animation, I don't know what does. So, you know, I get it. My YouTube statistics tell me that most people who watch these vlogs are returning viewers, so people already in the fan base. To these people, to you guys, Grass is probably just one of the many new features in this update. To me, on the other hand, it was the major technical challenge. But more importantly, to new players who don't know anything about the game and only have thumbnails and screenshots to rely on, from now on we'll make their decisions based on screenshots that are a lot less barren. In other words, for growing the player base, Grass might be the most important feature yet. Time will tell.